After using this DeWalt DW734 thickness planer for the first week, I've learned a few things. And those things I want to share with you. Remember, this is the first time I've ever used a thickness planer. I've been around shop tools my entire life, table saws, circular saws. I am a carpenter. I am not a woodworker, so this is something totally new to me. I had some misunderstandings that I had developed on my own about what a thickness planer can or can't do. And those assumptions were wrong. I've figured a few things out. I've shared some of them in earlier videos. And I just want to go through some things with you of what I've encountered, what's working best for me, and how I'm taking care of these situations or handling them. Hi everybody, I'm Jim Derdorf and this is Detroit DIY. Let's dig into this thing. The first thing that I want to talk about is the thickness planer is a little bit messy. As you can see, there's shavings a little bit of everywhere. I do have a dust collection system for my table saws. It's an amateur type system, I would guess. It's a cyclone that collects everything into a five gallon bucket and basically keeps it out of the vacuum cleaner. But it is not really designed for this type of material and it plugs it up if I go too hard. DeWalt has a nice little chart right here in their book that says that if your material is 13 inches wide or less, you will need to take 1 32nd of an inch off of it. That would be a half a turn of this dial is 1 32nd or this handle. I cannot do that. If I take a half a turn and, and utilize the machine to what it can actually do, it will overwhelm my collection system and plug it up. Even at a quarter of a turn, which is 1 16th of an inch, it will also overwhelm my collection system. It'll handle it, but it's, it'll, I'll have to stop, dig some stuff out, unplug it. So I'm better off going an eighth of a turn, which isn't really utilizing the speed or the power of this piece of equipment. So the collection system itself is kind of slowing me down. I have hauled out three construction garbage bags full of this material so I could imagine the mess I would have if I wasn't using a collection system at all and just shooting it out the back onto the floor I would have a real mess on my hands so I'm glad that I have some sort of a collection system however it is slowing me down let's take a look at what I got this is the dust collector that comes with your planer it also comes with an adapter to adapt it down from four inches which is most collection systems and what I believe could handle the full brunt of what this planer can do so I've got it adapted down to the two inches then it comes down here into my cyclone collector and then the five gallon bucket the cyclone collector I kind of left some in here and I'm we can see it kind of gets clogged up right here once it gets clogged up it still puts some in this five gallon bucket but it's also putting some in my shop vac so the shop vac is getting full at about the same time that the bucket is but i'm still getting some of this is what i've dug out from where there's slight little plug ups i've noticed that i am planing pine and the pine is a little sappy and it's leaving sap deposits inside of here which I believe is interfering with the ability for these to leave they're kind of sticking to it so I've used mineral spirits and I've cleaned the inside of this out a couple of times but that's kind of my setback or my slowdown at least one of them is this collection system the collection system should be better or maybe use it outside where you can just shoot it away but it's winter time and I do not have that option right now the next thing I didn't understand thoroughly about a thickness planer was I was always under the assumption that you could take a twisted cupped board run it through the planer and voila it would come out the other side fixed that is not the case it will come out the other side nice smooth pretty looking but it will still be the same twisted cupped board that it was when you fed it through. 
So you have to have one flat surface in order to produce the type of board that you want, which is a nice flat board. I did not thoroughly understand that. Thanks to YouTube and other sources of information, people have developed a way to get around that or to make this thickness planer joint one edge of the board. And it wasn't that difficult to do. The first couple that I sent through didn't come out as perfect as I would have liked them, way better than what they went in. But it took me a little bit to figure out that I need to eyeball down this board a little better and figure out exactly what's going on with it. I have a board right here that I want to show you the problems with and we're going to plane it during this video. I'm not going to show a whole bunch of that, but I am going to show what I'm going to do to get this out. If you watched my first video preparing this material for the planer, I stated that I wanted to have the cups up when I ran it through the planer. And some of the boards I did and some of the boards I didn't because some of them were only cupped basically on the ends and not necessarily in the center. So I flipped them over and ran them through the planer the other way on a sled and I shimmed them. So as you can see here we have a board that is horribly twisted by about a quarter of an inch or a little bit more. Not only is it twisted but it's also cupped. So let's take a look. I'm using my straight edge and I'm just setting it on here and as you can see there is some cupping going on here but in reality it's very slight amount of cupping and it's through this area. This area is pretty flat right here but these two edges are kicked down so it's it's a cup but it's not quite what you would think and it's the same thing here same thing here and the same thing here much less on this far end so if we turn this board over we can potentially get a little better look at what's going on and here the the cupping is very minimal. It's like a 32nd of an inch that I'm seeing. And you have to remember this material is rough sawn. So one side to the other side will be showing you something different. So what I'm really seeing is about right through here, this board is curved up and it's through here. The rest of this board appears to be fairly flat but it's curved up through there. Now I'm not saying that it's not twisted so what we want to do now is just kind of pick the board up and look down it and see how straight it is or where this twist may be. Look down the edge, look for any any kicks in this board to help you figure out exactly what's going on because it may just be one end of the board that's way out. So what I'm seeing is this very end of the board right here is kicked out pretty good. So I have options here as to how I want to do this. I can split the difference and I may still wind up with a little bit of a wobble. I could pin this side flat and just shim that side up and remove all the material from there and then I have to keep in mind do I have enough wood to do that or do I accept a board that's going to come out just a little bit twisted and some of that twist I can take out when I put the unit together so I made a sled to shim these up on to run them through the planer the first time. Let's get that out real quick. So this is what I've been using to help me make these horrible boards much better. It's a melamine shelf. It's 11 and a quarter inches wide. The exact same width of my material. 
it was the straightest flattest one I could find it wasn't perfect but it was really close to it so it's the one that I took I glued a little stop down on the end here and I'm using this to make the planer believe that I'm running through a flat piece of wood one side is perfectly flat and then I'm shimming this to be something different so that when I run it through the planer it, planer will recreate this flat surface on one side of this. So as you can see, we still have this nice amount of rocking going on. So I, I want to look at it real close here. So with visual inspection, I see that this area just like what I thought this edge is kicked up this area of my board is sitting nice and flat across here and I also have the same thing here my cup is all right here so, so what I want to do is get this situated on here where it's nice and square with the edges and up against my stop I'm going to put a couple of clamps on here just to hold it snug for me for a minute. So the problem starts about right here and then it gets worse the rest of the way across. So I'm going to use shims, just regular thickness shims and I'm going to shim this board and because I have it clamped over here I can push these under right where I want them and I'm going to do the same thing down here on the other end is push this shim in it is not as high up on this side and I don't want to force it to be different Now I want to do the same thing along this edge to support the board. And when I put the shims in along this edge, and when I put these shims in, I want to make sure that it's not binding here inside, but rather on this edge. So as I slide them in, I'm going to wiggle them around, and I can feel that this shim is in here. It's grabbing a hold in here and not here. So I have some that I've broke off at different thicknesses and we'll see if we can get one of them in there. And this end down here is by far the worst. So this one just slides in and you can see how thick that is. not finding anything that's going to work for me exact so I'm just going to go ahead and trim a little bit off of this one and it's still not quite there I'm going to take a little bit more off of it and I think we'll be good I like that and I want to do that in three or four places down the edge of this board just get it shimmed in there really nice it gets the gap gets much smaller down this way So there we go. I'm happy with that. We're going to take a closer look at this in a few minutes here. But before I pull these clamps, 
I'm going to go ahead and hot glue this board down to my sled. Now with the hot glue gun all warmed up, I just want to put about an inch long bead, inch and a half, right here. I hope my big head's not in the way. I want to do the same thing right here, but I want to shoot it underneath. This stuff firms up pretty good, and it will act as a shim itself. Now I want to glue the shim to the board. with a little bead right there then I want to shoot some underneath and glue the shim to the board so now the board is secured and the shim is secured to the board and I'm going to go through and I'm going to do every one of these shims and glue them in place I'm also this side is sitting flat so I'm just going to put a little hot glue right here on the edge and join this side to my sled And the reason I'm using the hot glue, it'll pop off. It'll hold on pretty good, but you can pop it loose. Then I left enough room down here where I can glue the board to the sled. I was worried about this glue not sticking to the melamine, but it does. It sticks to it well enough that it pops the melamine coating right off on these side shims i'm gluing the side shim to this board and then i'm shooting some underneath on either side of the shim to lock the board to the sled and help hold the shim in place to the sled not just to this board with everything glued on we're just going to let this stuff cool off for a little bit and grab a hold. The hot glue has cooled off and it's turned white and it has a good grip on things. I'm hopeful that you can see that gap in there. And it starts about right here. Otherwise, the board is sitting pretty flat the rest of the way. Also, this edge or this side of the board is sitting flat. We can go ahead and pop these clamps now. And I didn't really have any pressure on them other than to hold the board in place. I didn't want to reshape the board. I just wanted to see exactly how this edge looked. And it's straight and it's nice and tight. I've also left on my stop block here a little room. So I've got some hot glue here and it also gives me room to put a shim in each end of this. So that's why I kept this smaller so I could shim this into the board more easily. Let me turn it around and we'll take a look at these. With the sled turned around we can have a better look and as you can see there is a significant gap here. And this would be the worst part of the material or the worst cupping is right here. As we come down through this gap gets narrower almost down to nothing down here. So that's going to make it tricky to run it through the sled. Also you want to make sure that your grain direction is towards you because the cutter blade is running the opposite direction of the feed rollers so it's cutting in this direction so you want the grain toward you even though it's feeding it the opposite direction it's cutting it toward you. Before I can feed this through the planer I need to cut these shims off and I want to trim them off and you just have to score them and then snap them and it doesn't matter if they stick out a little bit just kind of pay attention what you're doing when you feed it in so that it's not tight to that side and then there we have it this is ready to go through before i send this through the planer I just want to point out one other thing. I'm planing sap and it seems as though it's collecting on the feed plates here and on the planer bed. This is the out feed table. The in feed table has some on it as well. So I'm just going to use some mineral spirits and clean that off. And then I'm going to put some paste wax on here, some finishing paste wax. 
for woodworking and wax this thing back down. I've already done this once and I noticed that it just keeps collecting so I want to get that cleaned off because I don't think it's going to help any with the ability for the material to slide through. So it's just causing my machine to struggle to feed the material through. This planer bed should be nice, clean, smooth, slippery surface and not have all of this built up on it. So I'm gonna get all this cleaned off and uh, we'll get some wax on here. Now that I have all the sap cleaned off, I'm just gonna use a paste finishing wax and I am going to get me a nice coat on here let it dry and I'm sure a little bit of this residual may be coming off on my wood but I don't think it's enough to hinder the finish that I'm going to put on the wood so we're going to let this dry real good we'll wipe the whole thing down and then get it buffed off with all the wax clean from the planer bed we're ready to get this through here and what I'm going to do is slide it in about three inches. I don't want it to contact the roller of the planer. But what we have to keep in mind is the planer will not have the ability to smoosh this board flat. So we have to be cautious of what we're doing here. We can bind the board, we can create other problems. The, the turret, let me pull this back a little bit, the turret can come down far enough to where it may feed the board through the planer but you'll actually collide into the turret like what's going on right here so that is too low now if I run this through the planer the first time and it does nothing I'm okay with that it'll give me an indication where I'm at also the feed rollers may pull it halfway and then quit and I'll have to pull it through the back myself the rest of the way it may even plane a little bit of material off of this edge and then quit pulling. So we have to just take baby steps here, take our time because what we don't want is this board to become jammed in here. The belts, the cutter heads locked up, the rollers can't pull it, the infeed rollers, and then your belt slip in and you're just causing damage to your unit that you don't need to cause. So if I can slide it all the way through, my infeed rollers are not touching it. So what I want to do is I just want to lower it down until I feel resistance on those rollers. And there it is. I can't really move it. It wiggles because the rollers are touching on this side. So we're going to raise it about a half a turn. And you can tell it gets worse. So there we are right there. At this point in time, I know that the rollers are just barely touching it. So I'm just going to go a quarter of a turn. That's it. I'm going to lock the head in place. When I push this through, I may get nothing. I may get a little bit. I'm okay with that. Baby steps. Let's get this thing pushed through the first time. So as you can see, the infeed rollers grabbed it and started to pull it and then they quit. And that's okay, we didn't remove not one lick of material and that's okay too. The thing is, is that because this board's twisted and we're not allowing this planer to do what it was truly designed to do, smush the board flat, and we're flattening the board, we really have to take baby steps here. So I'm gonna go another quarter turn, lock it down, Send it through again. So again, we really took nothing, a little bit off of that back corner but not much to speak of. So we are gonna just go another quarter turn 
And this may occur three or four times before we start actually removing material. As you can see we've removed about three inches of material here on a nice little taper. The feed rollers are now pulling it all the way through but it's very light down here on this other end. It's barely pushing it. So you can see why we have to take these baby steps. If I was to just push this down not fully realizing that this side of the board may be thicker or higher I could run into potential huge problems in a jam up. But I can say now that I've got it contacting and touching, I can better understand exactly what's going on with this piece of wood and not be so fearful of taking a little bigger swing at it. So now we are almost all the way across this side of the board and we're coming all the way up into here, a little beyond. 
where it's actually touching. So I'm just going to keep going quarter turn until I start pressing this whole board. I can feel a little dip right here. Once I get the full width of the board down here, then I'm going to start going eighth turns. So I'm going to keep feeding this through. We'll come back and take a look, pop it off the sled, flip it over and see how flat it is. I've finished running it through the planer and I'm trying to get you guys a nice straight on view. As you can see, we have made this board almost perfectly straight across. That doesn't mean that we took the twist out of it, but that means that it is nice and flat. And it's really good all the way down. Slight, slightest little gap right here on this side. So let's get this thing popped off the sled and see if we got the twist out. So I'm going to use my multi-tool and just come under the board here where I have a little gap and give it a little pop up. And that hot glue, as you can see, holds on pretty good. So we've also got a little bit of hot glue left behind on the board, which pretty easily knocks off. So it's not, it's not an impossible glue to use. In fact, this will all clean up pretty quick. What you don't want to do is send it through the planer with a bunch of this hot glue stuck on it because it'll just get stuck all over your blades, cause you some problems in the end. Now with all the hot glue removed, I just want to check our surface here, make sure nothing's no lumps in the way going to cause us an issue, cause us to get a false reading. Let's bring this board back here, plain surface down. We got a little piece right here. There we go. Plain surface down. We have maybe a 32nd of an inch of rock that way and maybe a 32nd inch of rock that way. To me that is nothing compared to what it used to be. If we flip it over, that's still there and it's immense compared to what we now have. So I will take that any day. While it's not perfect, it's really close to it. So here we can see our finished product on one side. Now it's no problem to send this through the planer with this side down. It is going to replicate it on this side. So we will have just a very slight amount of twist. We won't have any cupping and we're going to have a usable board in the end. That's all we got for this time. I hope that this video helped you out in any way that it could. If any of you professionals are watching this and you have something to add, I would greatly appreciate it if you do so. I am new to this. I'm not afraid to say that. And I want everybody to learn from my mistakes. And if someone can put in the comments other tips or pointers to do this even better, I would greatly appreciate it. If you haven't subscribed yet, I would greatly appreciate it if you would consider doing so. And if you enjoyed yourself, click on the video or tutorial that's going to pop up next to me. And remember to always respect the power of your power tools. We'll see you soon. Oh yeah, don't ever wear gloves while you're running this machine. They could snag on the wood and that would not be a good thing. Always use your bare hands. If you get a splinter, you get a splinter. It's better than having your hand pulled in.